Amen. Well, we're going to talk about healing. Um, healing is, is so big. To be honest with you, I was thinking I could teach this for the rest of the year. Healing. Is, Kenneth Hagin taught it all his life, so you know it's big. You know, the, the, the things that you do to, to, to stay healthy and remain healthy. Today's question, really, the big one is, are you right with God? Because that's the big one. You, you, you got to be in the position. Um, you know, my father in the gospel and all the mentors I've had have been faith preachers. You know, I'm a faith preacher. But God uh, doesn't owe you anything because you did something. You understand? Like, like even what you volunteers did, that doesn't mean he's obligated to you. Now, he wants to bless you, but he's not obligated because he's given you everything. Uh, if, you, if, you, if you don't watch, you get in, you know, entitlement has crept into so many things and that people deserve things, you know. If, if, you, if you don't watch, you get into where God owes you something and then you get offended and then you get cut off from your blessing. I have watched people in churches work for years, like 10 years, 15 years, and get offended and leave, and the church get blessed, and then they weren't a part of it. And it's very sad that they missed their inheritance because the devil took them out. I'll issue you a little prophetic warning here. I was standing over there thinking. See, I've been in a lot of fights with the devil, and he cheats. Like he hits you in the back of the head when you're not looking. You know, whenever you're not looking, he'll do anything. He's a backdoor man. I don't have no use for backdoor men. That's why I hate the devil. He, he, he just gets behind you and, and does something to you when you're not looking. And we're going to have a move of God. I don't know if you can tell. I've been saying it for years, but it's close, and it's in my belly, and it's in yours. The devil is a master at leaving sleeping cells and things set until God's going to do something. He, he, he lays under the surface. That's why it is so important that you examine yourself. Because you got to see, you got to ask God, is there anything in me that the devil can use when it starts to rain? Come on. Because if you're not, you, you know, I, I, I say this all the time. I have this much confidence in myself. My confidence is in him to keep me. To him who is able to keep me from falling. And if I get too arrogant, I start grinding on myself. I have a self-grinding program that I run. Because I do not want to be high-minded. You can do it in a New York minute. You can, go, you can be humble this morning and high-minded by 1 o'clock today. Because that's the devil puffs you up and tries to make you think you're something you're not. And uh, I think that you have to daily deal. That's what... Uh, one of the mothers in the gospel told us, you have to deal with yourself daily. I don't think you, you can go past a day without dealing your, with yourself. Maybe you can, but I like a short leash. Uh, I don't want to get too far off and then have to make a comeback. You understand? I don't, I don't want to waste my life like that. So I encourage you to, to examine yourself. Look over your membership book. It tells you how to deal with an evil report. Cover the fundamentals in the next couple of weeks, if you would. Just so you stay in perspective, because when the devil tries to attack, you, you, you don't really think we're going to have a move of God without an attack, do you? Can I just say it? Do you really think he's going to lay down in the corner and go, oh my, God's going to save a bunch of people. I better get out of the way. He's still trying to overthrow God. Don't ever forget the devil is still trying to overthrow God after all these years. He's insane. He's crazy. And anybody who's trying to overthrow God is crazy. So I, I plead the blood over you, and I ask you to examine yourself so you're safe in the days to come. Because the, 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 the world is, is getting crazier, and I know you know that. I mean, you're going to have to really know God to navigate what's a lie and what's the truth. And uh, I'm, I, there are things I'm really not supposed to tell you. You have to know God well enough to navigate your life with the truths you know. You, you understand, I can teach you, but you've got to do your own wording. You've got to do your own research. You've got to pray in the Holy Ghost so you know truth when you hear it and you know lie when you hear it. You, you know, you're, there are, there's a personal responsibility for you to, to pay attention as a believer. Amen. So uh, if you get offended, you know, I personally think it's evidence of a wrong belief. 
Um, if you have a balance sheet in your head, I call it a balance sheet where people owe you and you're still bringing up things they did 20 years ago or you're building up what they, you, you know, you got to forgive at the end of the day because if you don't forgive at the end of the day, it usually festers and takes root and then it grows something in there like an infection. You know, if you have a dagger in you that the wicked one put in you and you don't pull it out, it's going to get an infection around that wound. And then every time you do anything, you're going to go back to the wound. You're going to talk about how you're hurt. You, 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 you got to let God heal you up. And that means you have to deal with yourself. Because in every battle, I know you know this, some of it's your fault and some of it's theirs. It's never been one person's fault in any relationship. Uh, you know, there's two people there. So you, you have to deal with yourself. Um, expectations based on, you know, what you did and not what he did. Remember, your expectations have to be on what he did for you, not on what you did for him. Because the Bible says that before we knew him, you know, our righteousness was his filthy rags. And even after that, we don't know as much. We do the best we can with what we know, and we trust him with the rest in, in the end, don't you? I don't know about you, that's what I do, you know. No matter how much I know, I, I always know that there's things that are blind here, blind here, and I trust him to keep me. Uh, I, I don't have confidence in my own human effort to keep me safe. Do I do things to keep myself safe? Sure, we lock our doors and everything. <laughs> but, you know, I believe there's angels outside them doors. So I, I bank on them too. You know what I mean? I lock them, but I, I, I think, you know, I've, walked, I've walked around my property several times. This property, that property, Highland property, Sun Motors property, my house property. I used to walk around them all and anoint them with oil and say, Father, I thank you. These are a border in Jesus' name. Protect me, God. Protect my family. Protect all that's under me, God. Everything that concerns me, my children, my finances, everything around me, God, I thank you that it's protected because I'm in covenant with you and I'm just dropping that oil. And I'd walk around there sometime around the garage. I know people thought it was crazy. 21,000 cars went by every, every day and I'm out there dropping oil, praying. They probably thought I was crazy, but I never, I got two co-stolen cars back. Right. Hallelujah. You know, they come around to take something, but God took it back. So looking crazy or not doesn't really matter. It matters whether God's in covenant with me. And he protected, he protected us. Uh, so I encourage you to be mindful of your covenant. Now we're going to talk about positioning yourself. You know, turn to Luke 18, if you'd be so kind. Luke 18, 10. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Can you go further with that? Can you go to the next? Like, please keep going. I want to read it. 1811. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. I thought that was interesting that he prayed thus with himself. He's praying what he wants, kind of, or what he thinks instead of, he's praying with himself. God, I thank you that I'm not as other men. That's comparison and entitlement and debt. Or ex that I'm not as other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, even as this publican. He's comparing himself to a man that's next to him praying. Now he's going to give his list of why he should be healed, why he should be blessed, and why he should be prosperous. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off, not lift up so as much as his eyes to heaven but smote upon his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Amen. Now, a publican, if, if Jesus put publicans in with prostitutes, you remember he said, harlots and publicans will come in ahead of you. So obviously, it's not based on what you did, it's based on what you're doing with, with it. In other words, you have to repent. The, the Pharisee did not repent. Jesus placed uh, them in the same category as harlots, and yet the publican and the harlots got into heaven. And the Pharisee, who did all the religious duties right, could not receive from God. That's scary, isn't it? Matthew 21, 32 Hallelujah. 
For John came unto you in the way of righteousness. Now listen, and you believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him. Now this is where, to me, people who think they're Christians or Christians that are disobedient get in trouble right here. But the publicans and the harlots believed him. And ye, when you had seen it, repented not afterwards that you might. Nothing is worse than a group of saved or religious people who think they're saved, who got to look at somebody who's done everything wrong, and they found out something right. They're all, they all don't want to do it because they're so full of pride, they don't want to identify with the person that looks bad. That's what religion will do to you. You won't repent even though somebody got mercy right beside you, so, but you, it make, you, you can't identify with them but really you should because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. To identify with a sinner is, who's repenting could be the best thing you ever did. Are you with me? Yes. Identifying with repentance is the best thing that could happen to you. You know, after you're saved a while, you actually start thinking you're right. It's scary. You're only right because he made you right. And when you stand before God, he's not going to say, you did a really good job. He's going to say, enter in by the blood of Jesus who washed you clean. He took the punishment that you should have gotten. That's how you get in to heaven. Works creates debt. See, if you have a mentality of works, you might not know it. But anytime you start to say, I did this and I did that, you have, you have worked expecting a wage in your head. You created a debt. In other words, somebody owes you for the effort that you have put out. You're, mar you're on the market. It's like you got a job. And see, that, that mentality will keep you from receiving what God has for you. If you did it for a wage. And see, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be money. It has to be you owe me something even emotionally. You didn't treat me the way I wanted to be treated, so you have a debt to me, and I'm going to hold out till you pay it. I'm not going to talk to you for a week. I laugh. I told people when they became members here, I said, please don't not talk to me for a week. I'm a typical male. I won't know you were mad for at least for two weeks. <laughs> it's going to take me two weeks to figure out you're mad at me because I'm focused on what I'm doing. Ask my wife, poor girl. I mean, she's she, she been mad. I didn't know she's mad. Have to tell me. That's a typical male almost, you know. So why waste all that energy? You might as well just say it. But anyway, so you build emotional debts. Those are the ones that get you offended enough that start to curse you. You can secretly be offended and secretly hold somebody accountable in your head for something they didn't do. But that's a blessing blocker for you. I earned it, so I have it coming. But the kingdom is about being right with God. Luke 23. 23.39. And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him saying, If thou be Christ, save, us, save thyself and us. But the other answering him rebuked him saying, does thou not fear God, seeing thou art in this same condemnation? We indeed justly, for we have received due reward for our deeds, but this man has done nothing amiss. And Jesus said unto him, Lord, he said and said, Lord, remember me when thou come to thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, today you will be with me in paradise. If, you know, you could stumble over that. It's, it's, it's a nice story, but when you actually think of a man who lived wrong right up to the day he dies and God releases him from his punishment and lets him go into heaven. You have people in your life, I'm sure, that you are hold, holding accountable. Some of them might be your mothers, your fathers. Today's a good day to release them. Today's a good day to begin to let go of what you secretly hold in your heart that keeps you from receiving from God. It's so important because we're talking about healing. Romans 4, 5, and 6. 
This is all the unspoken stuff, you know. Like nobody goes around and says, I, wanna, I hate my husband. I want to get rid of him. But you can think it. You can think it. Your kids can think things. But to him that works not, but believes on him that, listen, that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted unto him for righteousness. Verse 4 says, Now to him that works, the reward is not reckoned of grace, but is debt. We're saved by grace, yet we can live in a mindset of the debt, and we go back under the law, and the law becomes in operation in our life because we have went back to scorekeeping, and we wonder why we're not getting anywhere. We switch systems. and We operate in the old covenant half and half in the new covenant, but you can't choose like that. You have to pick one, right? If you pick law, then you are going to be a scorekeeper and you're going to deserve things that you think you deserve, but you're also going to deserve the things you don't want. So the best thing to do is stay out of scorekeeping, live in the realm of grace, and freely you have received, so you freely give. And see, you think that's money because people use that to get offerings, but it's a whole lot bigger than that. It's releasing people because of the scorecard that you have internally that you think you can categorize, he's saying let go of those cards. I always say burn the scorecard. How can God get in if, you, if you're keeping it yourself? Uh, it's, you, you don't have, you know, really and truly, if you can live without people owing you anything, you'd be surprised how emotionally free you'd be. You know, uh, over the years, you know, uh, people who love me have said, you know, you let people take advantage of you. I said, I said, what's the difference? I said, they can't take something from me that I've already released. Like when I do something for someone, I release it at that moment. And if they don't, hey, look, I'll just say it. I've given people cars and they've done the craziest things in the world, but God told me to give it to them, but that was up to them. If they drove it off the Westover Bridge, that's not my business. If they took it out in the front yard, dumped gas on it, and burned it, it is not my business. I obeyed God. If they burn it, then I'll have to give an account for it. I'm sure God ain't going to give them another car. At least not for until they figure out what they did. Once you, when you do something, if, don't laugh at me. If you get your husband a cup of coffee, release it. If you get your wife something, release it. If you buy your wife a gift and she don't act the way she want, you want her to, release it. Let go in the name of Jesus. Let go so God can get in there. Don't don't expect your little box to be filled the way you want it because that needs to be broken and go away so they might not do it until God lets them because if you're doing it for a reaction you're not doing it for the right motive anyway you created a debt you bought somebody something and created a debt now they owe you and a lot of people would rather not have the gift and feel obligated don't tell me you didn't ask for help sometimes because you didn't want the people to feel obligated. You don't want to be obligated to people. They come help you do something and then they expect you to come help them and then you get offended because they didn't. No, you can't do that to yourself. You'll be crazy. You'll go cuckoo. Before you know it, you got this big card with all these names on it of all these people that owe you something in your head. And then the devil, when he wants to, he'll crank that up and go, you know, them Christians ain't worth it. Ain't nothing more. They know we don't care about you. God's supposed to care about you. He'll send you a stranger if he has to. Never seen the righteous forsaken nor the seed begging for bread. Some heathen will give you money if he has to. Some heathen will meet your needs if he has to. You can't create debts that can't be paid. I always say that, who was it? I was listening to a teacher, preacher, I don't know who it was. He said, Some people remember things God forgot about. You know, and if you don't watch, you remember all the things people did. You can get yourself all stirred up and angry one day, can't you? You can do it. If you want to play that tape. You know, it's funny. When you wake up, the devil hits play, and he's already playing it. You've got to turn it off. Because he's already trying to ruin your day and steal your blessing to get you offended so you don't get the reward. Uh, you know, you've got to keep that stuff out of your relationship. We receive from God by faith. Now, you're going to say, what's this got to do with healing? Everything. 
everything to do with healing. The ability to give and receive without strings is where one of your greatest blessings is with God. See, isn't it funny? When you keep score, you don't want anybody to give you anything and you don't want to give them anything because it gets messed up because you're worried about the obligations in either direction. That's not freedom. I like letting go. Shh, gone. Release it. Sow that seed. Thank you, Lord, for the harvest in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God, I buy shouting that up. See, I can pray over my offering. See that? Real easy. Lord, I thank you, God, that the seeds, all the seeds I've sown over the years, Father, I thank you. They'll just keep popping up. In Jesus' name, I thank you. As I walk, Lord, the harvest will come. And it'll come on every wave, God, in the name of Jesus. I'll walk right into everything I need to do what you asked me to do in Jesus' name because it's out in my future, Lord. Every seed I sowed went out into my future, God, to meet my supply for the things you asked me to do. I thank you, God. It'll come back in on every wave and I will be I have no needs, Lord. I not only have no needs, I'll be a need meter in the name of Jesus. That's praying. That's praying the word. If you, we could go to the, I could take you to scriptures for everything I said and those of you who are Bible readers know that I did. I just didn't quote it, the full scripture, but I quoted enough for you to understand. Your prayer life consists of the word, right? So we're gonna talk about being right with God. Jesus said, Mark 1, 15, sister, if you'd pull that up, please. And saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. When you're seeking healing, self-examination is necessary. Self-examination is necessary. We all know that when people got saved, they got healed. Why? Because they repented. It's the repentance that opened the door for God to be able to, to work with that. James 5.13. Lots of scriptures today. Is any among you affli afflicted? Let him pray. Is anybody merry? Let him sing psalms. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church. I've said this in other sermons. If you don't have a church, what elders are you going to call for? You know, let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the say, name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he have committed sins, uh oh, they shall be forgiven him. Confess your faults one to another. Pray for one another that you may be healed. Isn't it funny how confession is connected to your healing? Now, why did he say anoint you with oil? Why did God say anoint you with oil? Why did God anoint people with oil in the Bible? For service to him. When you're not just getting healed, you're repenting for your sin, and you're, when you let them anoint you with oil... I believe you're, you're committing yourself to be of service to God again. It's going to sound so strong. God didn't heal you so you can do, do everything you want to do and do nothing for him. He anointed them with oil of consecration when they got healed so they would be of service to him and fulfill their purpose. The anointing oil, David, you know, dumped it on everybody's head in the Old Testament, anointed everything. It was to show consecration for acts of service. If you're desiring healing and rejecting the will of God is one, like wanting a, blesser without the, wanting a blessing without the blesser. That's like your kid said, Daddy, I want you to buy me what I want and then I want to go do what I want to go do. It might work a couple times to create some space, but eventually there's going to be a demand from your father to do what God wants you to do. It's like rejecting and receiving at the same time. Think about that. I reject what you want me to do. I just receive your healing and I'm done. Bitter and sweet water coming out of the same well. God heals you and he anoints you. And I'm not saying God is a scorekeeper, but there are principles. There, you know, there's conditions on your healing or your salvation. Repent of your sin and be saved and be healed. There are conditions, they're just not like scorekeeping, like I gotta do so many of these and so many of that and I gotta, I gotta work for God three hours a day. It's nothing like that. It's, it's God, my life is yours. 
I'm in your service today, God. Is there any demands you have for me today? Anybody you want me to touch, anything you want me to do, Lord, I'm in your service today. I thank you that I have another day, Lord, because I'm well aware that my days on this planet shall end and my service on this planet will be over someday, God. So is there anything that you want to make sure I do before I die, God? Give me the grace. Tell me. Let me know what you are expecting out of my life that you've given me while I'm on this planet in the name of Jesus. You're saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. Why would God fill you with the third person of the Trinity for you to do nothing? He filled you with dunamis power, part of the Godhead. Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, the Godhead got inside of you to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, speak with new tongues, work miracles in the earth. Give people words of wisdom, word of knowledge, healing, deliverance. Use your faith to accumulate things to change the world, to, to, to further the kingdom of God. God put all of that in us and he saved us and healed us for service. You're bought with a price if the truth is known. He'll let you do it, but your life is really not your own. It was bought by the precious blood of Jesus who left heaven and bought you back after Adam sold us out. Healed you, saved you, delivered you from the curse for service. Like I said, sometimes we want the healing, but we don't want the healer. You know, uh, James 4, 7. You notice the word... It says, submit yourself to God, therefore God resists the devil, and he will flee. And, and uh, don't, please don't think I'm going to preach on submission, but I am, because submit to God. You're really not submitting to me, so I'm safe. I don't really care. No offense. I don't care. You submit to God, we'll be okay. 